Neben mir sitzt jetzt Chris Thomas, Publishing Producer bei 2K for Battleborn. And, you know, I gotta start out uh, like this because um, Gearbox usually does games that are kind of a crossover. Brothers in Arms was a crossover between FPS and strategy. Borderlands is FPS meets role-playing. So, what were the inspirations behind Battleborn? Oh, there's so many. Um, so obviously, you, you you nailed it. You know, they they're really good at taking these different genres and putting them together, and kind of finding whatever that secret sauce is, and and making something that feels really like unique and fresh. And uh, you know, after after Borderlands 2, they they had this idea about making. They wanted to like keep making these really cool characters because I think at the end of Borderlands 2, we ended with six. So. After they figured out, you know, we want to make these really cool characters and we want to make a ton of them, uh, that's that's when they had to start figuring out like how can we like make these characters coexist in the same in the same place, the same uh, like same universe, and they, that's when they came up with the whole like first the last star story with uh, at the like the end of the universe after all the the stars have been destroyed because um, all of those characters have kind of gathered in, in in this like one place and and that was sort of the justification for it and then that leaves also so much room for like your imagination to go wild with, like what we can do there with the story. Um, but as far as just the, the inspirations for the game, um, you know, there's a lot there. You know, you can think some of there, there's some stuff for from MOBAs. There's some stuff from fighting games. Some, there's obviously some RPG elements. There's and and it's it, at its core, it's a shooter. You know, so you, you're going to get sort of like the best pieces of each one of those genres. Um, I remember back when I started playing Borderlands, it shipped with four characters, and it was really hard to choose one. And now Battleborn comes out with 25. Good luck. So what, <laughs> what can you tell us about you know I know that the the characters are basically you can say split up into four factions each following their own in individual goals from from uh, merc mercenaries to I don't know environmentalists if you if you so will um, but what can we expect from from the different kinds of characters so different kinds of characters you've got just about everything um, you know one thing Gearbox says uh, that always resonated with me was that uh, that there is that every single character in Battleborn could be the main character of another game. So regardless of what kind of genres or types of characters you like to play, there's going to be a character in Battleborn that you'll gravitate to, and that we've seen it. We've seen this everywhere. Like everyone we've talked to, like with you, you were saying that you really like the ones with the guns. Like you, you res like you, Oscar Mike and Montana really resonated with you. Um, I tend to play the characters that use magic because I'm a total like you know fantasy magic nerd. So um, I always will go towards like the like the Orindi type characters. Um, so yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get magic. You're gonna get swords. You're gonna get uh, sniping robot butlers. Uh, you're gonna get uh, a giant hawk man that we just announced. Uh, called Benedict, and he's basically just this really incredibly funny uh, hawk guy that has a huge rocket launcher, and uh, he can fly, so he can fly around the map, and uh, he also, he plays a little bit differently, um, so he has that sort of old, old school feel of, um, you remember, in, like, I think Quake, you have to do, like, the rocket jumps and stuff, so, like, he can do that same thing, like, you shoot the rocket on the ground, it'll blast him up in the air, so there's pretty much every type of thing you can think of in this game. And especially since we have so many characters, you could say iconic characters, unique characters, all looking very, I can't say friendly, but definitely funny in, in a kind of way. Um, for you as a publishing um, producer, is there any talk of a limited edition for Battleborn that may come out with a figurine or a statue of, of one of the coolest characters? Well, we're still, I think we're still trying to figure that out right now. Um, I don't know that we're, uh, that we have anything that we can actually, like, tell you now about that um, I know for my on my side I'm just I'm trying to get the game finished <laughs> uh, you know there's there, we're, we just announced the release date which is uh, February 9th 2016 and that's gonna come that's gonna that's gonna be here before we know it so I'm trying to get just all of those characters the story mode the competitive multiplayer trying to get all of that stuff just wrapped up and finished and the, the, like as bug-free as possible and get that in the box so
So when I had my hands on the game, I noticed a lot, you know, since you just mentioned the different play modes, because you can play both solo, you can play PvE, PvP, um, there is a lot of progression to be made, because RPG elements are of course a part of, of Battleborn, and I noticed when I had my hands on the game, the most notable, you know, progression system is each time you level up, you get a choice between two, um, let's say, perks you can choose for your characters, but these stats all, you know, vanish after the match. But I've heard that there is something like the badass rank in, in Battle uh, in Borderlands 2 that kind of sticks with you. Right. These stats, do they carry over between all the different play modes? Is there one progression bar for your character or you as a player that you know you can advance? There's everything you just said. Um, it, it's actually really complex because you know we wanted everybody to be able to see each character's progression very quickly, um, at least just from the like to check out all their cool abilities and, and uh, so that helix menu is like the base layer of it and it, and you'll you up uh, sorry you will level that up to level ten within a single match and then that will reset. Um, but the longer you play a single character, uh, the the more experience points that that character will get and you'll you'll increase that character's rank over time and that's permanent and as you do that you're gonna unlock skins and you're gonna unlock um, new abilities actually that you can slot into your helix menu so you can even further change how you play that character and then on the outside of that there's a whole nother layer of like the like what you were talking about uh, that's similar to the badass rank in Borderlands 2 um, it's a player profile player profile rank and you'll gain experience whether you're playing the story mode or whether you're playing competitive it, it, it everything carries over so um, you you'll be unlocking all kinds of other stuff through that as well. Does the game feature a kind of drop-in, drop-out system where I can, you know, basically play the campaign and just have people join me or join other people, replay missions as I wish? So you can you can definitely replay the, miss the missions. Um, the, uh, the structure actually is um, more along the lines of what you would see in some of the um, in some of the really the bigger competitive uh, games that are out there now. Um, you're gonna start a game with you know a group of up to five players um, and you can play it by yourself. You know you could you could just go in and just be like you know what I'm gonna do the whole campaign by myself Myself, um, or you can have you know four other friends or split screen actually um, only two player split screen though uh, but then you're gonna play that match through to to the end and and um, there's there's really no there's really no like jumping into it like you you wouldn't have other people coming into your match you're gonna start with a group and and you're gonna go all the way through the end and the next question I gotta be honest with you I'm a little afraid of your answer and what you're gonna say to this because I see myself as a trophy hunter I, I like like achieving trophies and goals, but but with everything you've said to me about Battleborn, I am thinking that this could be, you know, like the hardest, most time-consuming trophy list you have ever seen. What can you tell us, you know, about the the coolest, maybe the funniest, and the worst trophies that um, you and Gearbox have put into the game? Well, we're actually not talking about trophies right now, um, unfortunately, or I would love to tell you some of those, uh, but. You're absolutely right that you're gonna you're gonna have a ridiculous amount of stuff to unlock. Um, that was kind of the I actually made the realization recently um, as I was just th as you know we're doing interviews and I'm talking about it more. I, I realized that holy crap you know with 25 characters and and the the full like unlock tree for each character. If if I'm a completionist, which I I am in most in most games, I'm gonna spend I'm gonna spend a, an amazing amount of time. I'm actually trying to go through every single character to master each one of them, so it's it's going to be crazy. And when I look at Gearbox games, what I always notice, and what what was actually the first thing I noticed watching the newest trailer for Battleborn, is the humor. Oh yeah. Um, how? Let's just say how important is it uh, to Gearbox to make a game that's not just fun to play, but also funny to play. But I think humor is something that's very very difficult to implement into a game because it's all about timing, yep. and you basically have no idea what the players will be doing at a given time so how the hell do you get the timing right to make this unique characters and situations it's very I mean it's very difficult but I mean Ge gearbox you know that's kind of in their DNA you know they they have they have that 
ability to just like nail comedy. Um, you know, the, the story itself is actually not that funny. You know, it's actually kind of a dark, you know, idea um, being at the end of the universe and only one star. But when you start taking yourself too seriously, I think you, you run a risk of losing a lot of fun there. Um, so like Borderlands 2, it had a serious story, but, you know, the game was hilarious. So you're going to see that same sort of humor in Battleborn. And honestly, they're so good at finding that timing and figuring it out that I think it's going to be I think it's going to like actually blow your mind when you actually see like how funny this game can be. For you personally, what was the coolest moment you have seen so far playing Battleborn? That's a good question. Um, so there's a character called Wrath uh, this guy, um, and he's he's a melee character. Um, he has these like three giant swords, and uh, his ultimate ability he spins up and like does this like tornado thing where it's like a whirlwind. So he's just like like spinning through, destroying everybody. Um, in the in the competitive multiplayer, um, there's always these crazy scenarios that will that will happen. And uh, I remember I was playing Thorn once, and anytime that guy gets near you, you're freaking out because like if he gets too close you're just dead like you have to you have to take him out before he gets too close so most people are just running getting away so he spins that thing up starts coming at me and I use Thorn's abilities to double jump so she can double jump super high and I basically jumped over him and, and came and landed right on top of his head and I had and I had knocked like four arrows and just did like this Legolas move and like popped him right in the head and killed him so <laughs> it was pretty amazing what I also notice about Gearbox games is their unique grasp graphic style. It, of course, Borderlands being the prime example for that, but Battleborn also uses a very unique style of graphics, and I think um, I sadly forgot the name, but it, it is one of the most iconic basically uh, animators of all time who basically worked with you on the game. Yeah, I think. that's, that's Yeah, Michel Gagné. Um, and yeah, he, he worked on uh, uh, Iron I, the Giants. Iron Giant, yeah, and, and the, Don Blues. yeah, yeah, the uh, and and the the effects system and the effects art in our in our game is like all his baby. So like every everything that you see, um, that's that you know each one of the the abilities that you see in the game like has that really cool flavor on it. It's it's actually really impressive. And my last question, and I gotta go out on a limb here and say Borderlands is my personal favorite game of all time. So the last question is Borderlands three. Yes, no, and more important, when? Well, all of those questions I could probably couldn't answer until you know way in the future. But um, I can tell you that Gearbox is hiring for it. You know, I think Randy mentioned that um, a while back. Um, you know, they're super excited to to get to work on it. Um, and as soon as I, I think, as soon as they have the the right people, they they probably will. So. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Thank you, Chris, for talking to us. And euch vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen.